Anderson. Um, super impressed on film, uh, watching them and, and obviously playing them the first time. Um, so we knew we were going to have a tough test today. And um, you know, Matt Madelon and his coaches have done a great job uh, with that with that team. So um, happy to be moving on. Um, you know, not our best per se, but I think you got to give Princeton a lot of credit to that. Um, you know, our older guys seem to step up when we needed them. Um, and I thought Logan was terrific in the goal. Thanks, Coach. We'll take uh, questions for student athletes. Again, uh, the microphone's being passed around. We can give you a name and affiliation. Thank you. Uh, Patrick Stevens with Cross Magazine. Logan, the, the three minute non releasable penalty that they got, you guess that was the first thing they're able to shoot, right? Mm -hmm. right. So, what, what do you feel like you, know, you guys were able to do defensively to kind of Signing that after they got that quick one, and how important was it to kind of keep the bleeding and send the bleeding there to one goal at that time? Yeah, going into the half, luckily we were able to kind of game plan that. Um, they kind of had some options of what they set up in, and um, our defense did a great job. We, we over communicated, that was kind of what we were trying to do out there. It was a little loud, but um, props to the defensive guys for um, I don't think they got a shot on goal during that three minute period. Yeah, and then uh, then we got a 30 second push. Um, we killed that and then we cleared the ball and then got to our offense. The score goal was really good. Um, I think that was um, very big for us in terms of momentum. Um, and our, our offense and defense kind of um, fed on that. Front row right here. Logan, you had a career high in saves tonight with 19. I think uh, something noteworthy was six in the first quarter. Six in the third quarter. How is how important is it to you as a goalie to get those saves early, get yourself into a rhythm at the start, and then come down to the half as well? Yeah, I think I can speak for all goalies. Getting that first save of the quarter, the half, the beginning of the game is huge for for goalies. And mm -hmm. I kind of um, once I get that first save, it gives me the confidence to be able to make the next one. Again. <coughs> so, um, but more than that, I think uh, just clearing the ball is, is just as important. And I think we lacked a little bit on our clearing game today. Um, we kind of wanted to get it out quick. Mm -hmm. um, at times, we were a little slow on that stuff, but um, getting those saves early are very important for, for me. Uh, okay, we're going to front row in black and then right behind them for the next question. One of the big goals of that game was Bubba Fairman taking off for about 65 yards. Um, I guess he was running away from you guys, but what did you see on that play and how did that jack up the team? Uh, yeah, no, Bubba's uh, done a great job for us. You know, uh, he has an offensive background. And any time we're able to run and get that transition, you know, uh, we're always, we always want to do that. That's an awesome uh, play style that we've kind of adapted, especially this year. And, you know, anytime you get a big defensive stop and you're able to uh, turn that into offensive momentum, that's always a huge juice goal. Um, and I think that really just showed, you know, with the bench and uh, the energy after that goal. So it was a big one for us. And uh, it's always exciting to see, you know, it's, the, it really work out from uh, defense to offense. So it's awesome. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. No, right there, second round. Kevin Brown for Inside Cross. Logan, just feedback on that. Just how important was Bubba with, with Roman going down today and blocking shots, that goal, and on the other end with, with Keegan and all his traffic for, for ground balls? Yeah. Um, I think uh, we, we realized we were kind of getting beat on ground balls, and they're making some good plays, props to them and everything. But um, we kind of had it in the back of our heads that that was going to happen, so we had to step up, and, and those guys did that. and. Uh, I thought it was funny, Bubba jumping in front of that shot and hitting it back with his head. That was that was awesome, you know. Uh, guys like that, um, older guys putting their putting their bodies on line to uh, win a game. In the front row here, can we get my mic, please? <laughs> uh, when the game went to a four-hour delay, and uh, I know it's difficult to, I guess, when you're trying to get in the zone, and then you have like four extended hours. Uh, I mean, how did you spend that time as a team? Anyone? Yes, sir. I'll go. Um, uh, we just we had to keep it in our minds that um, we were going to play, and you know it's 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 not the best when you're getting ready to play. Um, you're kind of getting amped up a little bit, staying calm. But um, once we heard that, we knew that we had to um, deal with that situation better than Princeton, and um, 
as a group, uh, we kind of just stayed stayed uh, stayed up. Um, uh, we kind of had the, the right mentality going into that delay and um, got some food, got some rest, and then we came back ready to go. Uh, Keegan, this is your first time at Championship Weekend, and you know, yeah, had training in the first quarter. Uh, what was it like, just you know, starting off that hot, and you know, your first game on the stage like this, and also, um, you know, what was key to you starting out uh, so quickly? Yeah, obviously it's a great atmosphere out there. I uh, was pretty excited to be here. And, uh, really just wanted to come out and play as hard as I could. And I thought uh, our offensive flow at the start was uh, was awesome. We got the ball spinning. Princeton's got a really good defense, so we know we need to be sharp right out of the gate. Uh, and I was just in good spots, so I just took advantage of it. In the back there. Question for Ajax. Um, Matt Ray had a last couple games, teams have been doing a lot to get him to play on ball. He had a great game today. Can you talk a little about what you see in him, you know, as he's playing on ball instead of playing off ball? Uh, yeah, no, he's, uh, I mean, he's an awesome, awesome defender. Uh, someone I've been able to look up to, kind of taking me under his wing, uh, being a younger guy on the team. And, you know, they tried to do those little things, but uh, he's such an all-around awesome defender. Uh, you know, he works tirelessly. After practice, one-on-one -on -one dodges. The scout guys are always giving us great looks, you know, just uh, matching kind of what Princeton doing or any other team, and uh, you know that really mimics and carries over to the field. And I think it shows like him doing all that stuff after practice, and the scout guys giving us great looks all week. It just makes it easier when we go into that game time and you see Matt Rahill being able to make those big-time plays. And uh, he, like I said, he's an awesome defender, but a great leader on the field, and you know, kind of keeps that defense together. And, uh, he's he's a really underappreciated guy, but he's uh, he's been awesome for us all year. Second row, right uh, for all you guys living here on the left bench. Um, uh, today in the faceoff game, it was a little bit more junked up, uh, more scrums than a typical game. What did it do for you guys to one know that maybe Luke wasn't going to come out and just get it and go, and know that you might have to fight for each round ball in each possession? Yeah, um, like I said earlier, we knew that this team they're the number they were the number one. Uh, ground ball team in the country. So um, with that in mind, we kind of had to, um, their, their uh, face-off guy did a good job scrapping it up in there, their, their wing guys. Um, but when the ball came down to our end, um, we knew that we were going to have to defend for 60 seconds or however long it took, and we kind of just took it one, one play at a time. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I think we had a really good game plan for Coach Kennedy. Uh, you know, they got some really athletic players, 14, 15. Uh, who are, you know are always trying to create that fast offense uh, transition, and uh, our, we just had a really great uh, game plan for it. And the scout gave us a great look all week, just kind of getting that early offense and uh, transition game, which we were able to kind of keep them to a minimum, which uh, really helped us out. Do we have any other questions for student athletes? Okay, we'll dismiss the three students. With Viner Four Gates, you've heard the phrase "We make your company work." What that means to us is that we take care of every ticket, every call, all the time. If you're tired of waiting on hold for tech support, or it takes too long for your tech support company to get back to you in an email, try Viner 4 Gates, where making your company work is our primary. What are doing at this point? Do you expect to be able to play this? Uh, good question. Um, I'm not sure exactly um, what, what happened, um, how it happened, but just in talking to our trainer is awesome and our doctor was there and just kind of what I was getting was just I'm not sure it's the right thing to play him right now um, we'll reevaluate tonight and see where he's at um, if it's ever something that listen if we'd be putting him in harm's way I'm just not gonna let him do it and you know Roman like Roman like you could break his leg right and he'll want to play so he's the type of guy I love him to death I love his passion we're gonna have to protect him from himself, uh, maybe steal his helmet or something. <laughs> when, when you when you look at the, the way things have been going of late, a lot of blowout victories, to have one where it was maybe you had to muck it up a little bit more, I think, right? Yeah. How encouraging is it that you guys were able to keep that separation all the way through, including with that non-releasable penalty? I mean, no. Yeah, I just felt like, you know, and, and I have so much respect for Princeton. They are super athletic and they're long, and you kind of see that on film, and they play a lot of guys, um, especially on defense, so they keep rotating fresh guys in. Um, we, I just felt like there were times where, you know, we just didn't play with poison. We didn't play as smart as we could, you know, like like Ajax had a great game, but we come down on a break, and, 
you know, we're, we're playing a lot of defense and we go to a goal and we just, that was a time maybe to catch our breath and maybe possess the ball a little bit just because it got, it got tilted after the first quarter. I felt like we played a ton of D. And so it's, you know, we try to kind of mention to the guys like, you can't not go to the goal and you can't not be aggressive, but you really have to start thinking a little bit harder about pros and cons, like risk reward, like, mm, you know, because if we if we take a shot and it hits the pipe, which I think um, a couple times we did, now all of a sudden we're going back and playing more defense. Um, so, you know, I didn't feel like we did a great job with that at times. Uh, we did have some timely goals. You know, I did feel like, you know, Luke's stats weren't amazing, but we did get two on the break to Owen. I thought those were critical in the third quarter to kind of get some momentum and create that gap. Front row. You got creative with uh, it's John Geffert playing a little short stick, a little long stick. You played 51 McDonald a bit. What did you think of your sort of uh, makeshift defense on the fly? Yeah, kind of next man up mentality. Uh, Jack's been doing a great job, uh, plays a man down for us, and he gets uh, reps every week. And then just get, get was a short stick. He was a mid in high school. We gave a poll, um, you know, shades of 2019. Um, we had a guy go down in that quarterfinal game with Princeton, so Gep would come off and grab short and grab pole, so he can do a little bit of everything. But just proud of those guys, their effort, and just you know willing to do whatever it takes. Okay. Well, why don't we go here in the second so, round? Yeah, most teams, when you get to the postseason, you're talking about peaking. Um, are you concerned that you didn't bring the A game tonight? You still won by a certain amount of goals, but are you concerned about that? Um, I mean, we won, and, and we kind of always look at each game and, you know, where did we go, what did we do well, what what did we do well, and, and we'll kind of go over it with the guys. This game, because of a quick turnaround, just be some highlights of some things, um, but it's a semifinal game, so you expect it to be tough. I mean, we, we won the game by five goals, and we didn't feel like we played great. Um, so I think sometimes you know, we have to catch ourselves and be like, listen, that's a good team we just beat. Um, but when you think your own standard, right, like did we play to our best ability, I think that's what most coaches will kind of emphasize. And um, I think physically I thought there was great effort. I just feel like maybe some execution and maybe some decision making wasn't quite what we've been. Um, but again, sometimes when this happens, you know, we talk about it and, you know, hopefully we respond well to it because we're going to need to do that on Monday for sure. Right. We're here in the front row and then we'll go over here in the front row. Coach, the conversation around this team's place, not just this season, but in history, gets a little louder with every win that you guys rack up, and it assuredly will be at its loudest over the next 24 hours or so. How do you guys you know, continue to tune it out as it's getting louder and louder with, with your place in history? Yeah, I think that's, you know, when we, you know, I, I started hearing more and more, so I feel like we have to, because the guys get on their phones, they're reading that stuff, you know, people are sending it to them. And, and we just kind of counterbalance them. You know, if we, let's say we lost three weeks ago and, you know, everybody was telling us how bad we are. It's almost like the NFL, right? You you win that week, you're amazing, and you get six days of that. And then you got to, like, keep them humble. And if you lose, you get six days and you got to pick them up. So I think with our guys, it's that balancing and just reminding them, like, listen, um, if, if we lose, then it doesn't really matter, does it? And, and we try to do things. We watched that uh, Tom Brady man in the arena, and we focused on um, the year where they were undefeated and they played the Giants and they lost. And, you know, just kind of the perspective of both teams and talking about, hey, you lose the last game, it doesn't really matter. So none of that really matters now. And we're really not into the comparison game. Like, people, you know, if they have that extra time and they want to compare us to other things, like, we really can't get caught up in that. We just need to be the best version of ourselves, and I think our guys have a sense of that. Um, and right now, it's just a matter of in the next like 36 hours or so, you know, what can we do to put our best foot forward, prepare, to balance the rest, um, you know, and kind of manage everything in terms of our preparation. So a little bit challenging. It's just not. I don't think people realize we kind of do something at the very end we rarely do all year. Um, so it's very unique. Um, and again, it's sometimes the luck of the draw in terms of who you play, when you play, um, and you just got to manage it the best you can. Front row? You got the mic. Are you done? No. no okay, all right. You're done. Thank you. Uh, Coach, I don't know how much of the uh, first game you had an opportunity to see, but um, what does it mean for you just as you know, a former Cornell player? Um, obviously, you know, Coach Moran had a ton of Maryland ties. Just to see these two teams as the last two teams uh, left standing, you know, in a year where Coach Moran uh, passed, you know, 
both teams are trying to kind of carry out his legacy? Uh, crazy, right? Uh, man, um, he's up there smiling, I can tell you that much. You know, his alma mater and the place that he called home for a long time. Um, man, I don't know, but sometimes stuff, weird stuff happens, and I know he's probably super excited, um, you know, and proud of both programs. Um, you know, Connor and that team, have, they've done a great job. Um, you know, we've scrimmaged them over the last few years, um, and we scrimmaged them uh, in the fall. So it's funny, the first opponent we played uh, this fall in October up at uh, Del Barton, New Jersey, is Cornell. But uh, great tradition, um, probably uh, for Donville and I, probably the team we didn't want to play um, because we love the place so much, and it means a lot to us, but we realize that's just part of it. You know, we got to kind of just block that out and focus on prepping um, the rest of the team. We, we're, we owe them that, so that's what we'll do. Um, but again, it says a lot about what, you know, Connor and that, those guys have done, that staff has done um, to get to the championship and just, you know, a proud uh, alumni base and fan base. And again, they got a lot to be proud of. Okay, we got a question on Zoom from Nikki Wolka. Uh, hello, yeah, Nikki Wolka, a uh, Diamondback coach. Uh, obviously, killing that penalty at the end of the first half and going to the second, you guys were already on a, a scoreless streak there. And then uh, you guys uh, killed that penalty, killed the ensuing 30 second penalty. Do you think that really helped swing that momentum and kind of turn defense in the office on that? Run that really put you guys out yeah, we, we talked about that at halftime. If, if, if we could kill that, that would be a huge momentum swing. Because uh, when you get a three minute unreleasable, if you, if you cash in, you're going to get the momentum. But sometimes if you don't, there's a little bit of like, oh man, we, we, we didn't really you know, make the most of that opportunity. I felt like we, we failed a couple clears on that that we'd love to have back. Um, where we just didn't quite get it into our end and possess it. Um, but I do feel like we got a little bit of a break when they they had the ball with about 25 seconds and decided to hold it. You know, you're losing like a sixth of that three minutes just to hold it and make sure you get it back. So that got down to one, and that was our sell at halftime is, hey, it's like being down for a minute. You know, it's what, there were 61 seconds. Um, and so we actually thought they would come out with a play so we changed what we did um, and we shut off a guy and just changed it up so that we could disrupt it. Because at that point it was, if they score quickly, then it's a man down face off. You got three guys versus, they have three versus our two at the face off X. So as much as it was like, you know, stopping that was like kill as much time. So if we could get it killed, even if they scored, we were back to, all right, it's going to be 10 on 10. So, um, and then of course we, we don't get the ball out. Um, and then we get a 30 second penalty. Um, so again, I felt like that kind of started swinging that possession time to the other end and I felt like we were kind of fighting an uphill battle the whole time. Okay, we have two more questions, one here and one there. Hey coach, uh, several big milestones today. Uh, one of them, Logan Wisnowski's 200 goals, also uh, breaking the, um, the Maryland record in goals. Um, I know he's not one to two <laughs> no. one horn much, but um, did he at least acknowledge it? Uh, no. <laughs> Logan, like, he, he just, you know, uh, I, I, listen, I think Logan has done so much, um, and I joke with his dad, um, you know, 20 years from now, um, he'll, he'll look back with maybe some fondness. I think when he um, broke the record, um, we had the ball, someone tried to give it to him, um, and he didn't take it, and so I took it. And um, after the game, I made sure that he got it because his dad was like, wait a minute, you didn't get the ball where you broke the record? Mm. Um, so I was like, no, I got it. Like, he, he's just so focused and dialed in, and he's not about individual accomplishments, and that's what I love about him. But you kind of know 20 years down the road, there will be some things he'll be super proud of. But I think he's in the moment, and he doesn't want to make it about anything else but the team, which, listen, I love that about him. Um, and when your leaders are doing that, right, the rest of the guys follow suit. Final question, I agree. Coach, you've been here before a couple of times, obviously. This year you have, you know, five, six hours less before the championship game. Does that change how you prepare at all? Uh, well, I, I think we have to kind of make a decision now. Like, you know, by the time we get done, it's it's 9.30. I don't even know what date is. Um, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> but it's 9.37. Um, we got most of the guys on the first bus. These guys will be on the second bus. Um, you know, shower, clean up, get um, just our treatment, stuff like that. And then we got to figure out, you know, how quickly do we want to start our prep for Cornell? 
uh, how much do we want to do and, and trade off of sleep right now? Because I think sleep sleep is the most important things in term, thing in terms of uh, recovery. Um, and then how much do we want to give them um, before one o'clock on Monday? Um, so um, I watched a little bit of that game today, um, and you know sometimes it works out. Like I I tried to watch the you know Princeton Cornell game pretty intently. It was one of their Princeton's last regular season games, and then. They didn't go to the Ivy tournament, so they only that was like their third to last game. So I was able to kind of get a two for one there, uh, which was helpful. And then we did scrimmage them in the fall. So um, again, they played great today. Um, they looked awesome. So we'll definitely have our work cut out for us. But um, at least it's not like a team we just didn't really see all year. So I think there's a there's a little bit of carryover that we can utilize. But again, just trying to balance like how much do we want to give them so their heads aren't spinning and we can play fast and free and, and really play and execute well. Okay, Coach, thanks for your time. Thank you.